burdens are actually lifted on Calvary. And if you take it to the Lord, he's just definitely going to take it away. So I pray that this year you're going to, to pray that your burdens and you take them to the Lord and he's going to take care of you. to invite you again that we may listen to the word of God today. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, bless us. Bless everyone who is listening to your word. And bless this university. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The message is a question. Are we focused or you are distracting. Are we focused, we focused, or you are distracting? I want us to focus on the concept of unity as contributing to a deeper experience with God. Without unity, we cannot experience a deeper relationship with God. And unity is a sign of being focused. When we are all focused, we are united. But when there is distraction, when you are distracted by something else, you lose focus and disunity is a sign of being distracted. And that's why we want to ask today, are we focused or are you distracting? Without unity, no relationship will ever blossom or go beyond where it is. We must all be united and agree 
on where we are going together. The reason we can operate together in this institution is because we are in agreement that we have come to share knowledge so that at the end of a certain period of time, certificates will be given to those who qualify. At least we are in agreement about that, and that unites us. Without unity, without unity of where we are looking at, the relationship breaks. And so if one of us thinks that they are eating and feeling good as they eat around is of a greater focus than working on their certificates, normally there will be a disagreement and they are sent away because we are not focused together. If somebody thinks that attending class, which should unite us as one focus, is not important, and they sleep for too long, and they go drinking when we have all agreed that we don't use alcohol, when we have all agreed that we are not immoral, when these kind of things happen, it becomes necessary for the one who is distracting us from our focus to get out of the way so that those of us who are in agreement that working towards this certificate is important, we remain together. Without unity, no relationship will ever blossom. You need to agree on a purpose. We must all agree that we are going somewhere. We must all focus in one direction. Unity is a we business that each contributes to. That's why we say, are we focused? Because unity is about we. An individual can contribute to unity, and an individual can distract us from our focus. And that's why we are asking, are we focused? Are we united? Or are you distracting us and causing disunity? Brethren, unity is very important, but let me say that unity is not uniformity. Unity and uniformity are different things. But for many people, they think that unity and uniformity are the same thing. And so when they come up with a standard in their remote village in some desert, they want everyone to follow that standard, even those who are in Greenland where there is snow. Because in their lost mind, they think that we must all be uniform, whether you live where there is snow or whether you live where there is hot desert every day. And that's why we must be very clear that unity is not uniformity. We may not be uniform, but we can be united. Unity is agreeing on the same goals and having the same vision and the same desire. Unity is a sign of being focused. Disunity is a sign of being distracted. Are we focused or are you distracting us? The church must be opposed to the world but be united within itself. Let me repeat that. That the church must be opposed to the world and say, no, 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 we are in, in no agreement with the world. We disagree with the world, but the church must be united with its, within itself. We must contribute in our disagreement with the world, but we should not contribute in our disagreement within ourselves.
When we come within ourselves, we must be united. We must be united. Without that unity, we will not have a deeper experience with God. And that's why the church has always had room for things that are called disfellowship, removal of members from the records. Why? Because if one or two of us are not in agreement any longer with what the church believes, then they are free to leave so that the church can remain focused on its purpose. We cannot afford as a church to be divided within. Are we focused or are you distracting? In Acts chapter 6, when you read from verse 1, the Bible tells us that a problem occurred in the early church that Jesus left. The women could not agree on distribution of food. The Bible says, now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, you see they were succeeding, the Hellenists started doing what? Murmuring against the Hebrew because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. You see, a problem occurred, and disunity was on the way. The Hellenists, the Greek, the, those of Greek origin were complaining and saying, no, the Hebrew are not treating us well. We, we, we need to stop everything and start discussing this thing. This is not fair. This is not right. We must discuss why are our widows being treated unfairly. Verse 2. And the twelve disciples summoned the body of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. The disciples said, Listen, this discussion that is being raised here is contributing to breaking us apart, to disunity. It is not contributing to our single purpose of preaching the gospel. They came together and said, mm -mm -mm, listen, while you are arguing that Jesus said, love your neighbor, while you are arguing that Jesus said, help the poor, while you are arguing, saying that it, we should be fair with everyone, but that discussion is not contributing to increasing disciples, but it is stopping the work we are supposed to do. And the disciples said, we know the intention of this discussion. It may look like a good discussion. It may look like an innocent discussion, but it is breaking the purpose why the church exists. And they called everybody and said, listen, this discussion has an issue. Verse 3. Hmm. Therefore, brethren, they said, let us pick out from among you seven men who have a good reputation and they are full of the spirit and they have wisdom and we can appoint them to take care of this issue while we do what? Verse 4. But we disciples, we, the head of the church, will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The early church chose deacons to prevent itself from disunity. They came up with this new invention to preserve unity. There are no deacons in the Old Testament. The Bible they had at that time was the Old Testament. They didn't go and read and say, now let's look. No. They came up with a new invention and said, listen, we need a group of people. We will attach their name to be deacons. And their business is to make sure we are not distracted from what we should be doing as a church. I can imagine somebody saying, oh, it's not in the Bible. Deacons are not in the Bible. Oh, our pioneers did not approve deacons. Where in the Bible are there deacons? But listen, unity is so important that a strange invention was necessary for purposes of unity. Without unity, we cannot have a deeper experience with God. The disciples 
went out of the way and did something strange for the sake of unity. They said, let's appoint people and call them deacons. And what's their purpose? To, dis to listen to arguments about bread and food. While they are listening to that, we focus on preaching. Brothers and sisters, it's my prayer that when it gets to a point where we have small arguments, we will allow some people to take care of those small foolish arg arg arguments, but we focus on what we are to do as a church. We must be united on the goal of bringing many more disciples to the fold of Christ. We must refuse to be divided by small arguments. Any argument can be related to the Bible and be made a matter of life and death, but we must be united on our focus. We can choose a committee and give it a new name. It may not have existed anywhere, and let them deal with the issue as we focus. If there are people who are so irritated with the way the logo looks like, Choose a committee and to tell them, logo people. Everyone who wants to discuss the logo, go to that corner. As you talk about the logo, we are preaching Jesus Christ and bringing people to the fold. Don't confuse us. If you have a problem with the Holy Spirit, with the Trinity and what have you, please gather yourselves, go to the other corner, discuss it. We give you eternity of discussion. Meanwhile, we must remain focused on what the purpose of the church is. We must do that which Christ called us to do. We must remain united. If there are people who are concerned about the number of this tribe or the other tribe in the church committees, in the church leadership, we will call them the cohesion and tribal committee. We can form it. It doesn't have to be anywhere. Deacons were not anywhere. Form a committee. Send them to that corner. Count the people of every tribe and find how you can balance them. Meanwhile, we will not be distracted by your discussion of which tribe is where. We will focus on what God called us to do. This is what we are supposed to do. Without unity, brothers and sisters, we cannot have a deeper experience with God. We must do everything to preserve unity, even if it means a new invention. If you are so uncomfortable with being around here, we can help you build another church across the road, and you stay there and discuss your problem so that we are not distracted. We will love you while there, you love us while we are here, and let us focus. We must remain united. We cannot spend time bickering and we are waiting for the Lord. No. Unity meant that they remained focused on preaching. They refused to get distracted. Unity is a sign of being focused. That's why they said, listen, we will focus on preaching. They said, deacons, take care of whatever women are saying, the Hellenist women, the Hebrew women, we, we may not be interested for now. Our big interest is, is the church growing. So please, take care of the argument of who was given salt, who was not given salt, who was given bigger bread, who got the smaller bread. Please, don't bring that to us. We are apostles. Unity is a sign of being focused, and disunity is a sign of being distracted. Are we focused or are you distracting? In Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, Jesus gave this advice as he was talking about those who accused him, saying, hey, you are, you are casting out demons by the power of demons. And Jesus said, knowing their thoughts, he said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. No city or house divided against itself will ever stand. And you need to know that every time there is always quarreling in any church, in any congregation, in any place, it affects the purpose of God in that congregation. It affects the purpose of God in the life of the people in that congregation. 
And Jesus says, there is no way we can be divided amongst ourselves and survive. Jesus warned against being divided because it is a recipe for a disastrous end. Whatever reason you give for disunity will still destroy you. Whatever reason you give for disunity means we have a different focus. There is no justifiable reason for disunity. Let me repeat that. It was not just something I spoke out of nowhere. Whatever reason you give for disunity means we have a different focus. Whatever reason, whatever good reason, whether you have read big books, small books, whether you, are, you think you know, whether you think you are better than everybody else, whatever reason you give for disunity is not given by God. Unity is a sign of being focused. Disunity is a sign of being distracted. Are we focused or are you distracting? There is a very interesting passage in Philippians chapter 1, verse 15 to 18, where there seemed to be some unity of sorts. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 15 to 18, that some indeed preach Christ from what? From envy and rivalry. Yeah, that there are people who are preaching. Yeah, they are preaching, but deep within them, it is envy and rivalry. But others are preaching from what? From goodwill. Verse 16. Those who preach from goodwill, the latter, do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. Verse 17. But the former, those who preach out of envy and rivalry, proclaim Christ out of partisanship, division, and not sincerely, but thinking to afflict Paul the Apostle, me, in my imprisonment. Verse 18. Now listen to that. And he says, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Praise the Lord. He said, listen, while I seem to notice some difference, I notice that we are at least united in one fact. They are preaching, I am preaching. So we are all preaching. So even though their purpose is wrong and my purpose is right, let, let, let's not worry. All of us are doing what? At least we are preaching. While motives for preaching were varied, and some not very good, but Paul was grateful that unity was upheld and he was content with that unity. He said, it's okay. I will not go around hunting their purpose, hunting and say, oh, you are envious. No, if we start turning against each other, we are not united. He said, let them continue preaching in rivalry and envy so long as people are coming to Christ. And let us continue preaching in goodwill. We are all united in one purpose. Preach! If the focus is the same, the other things can vary and we remain safe. Few are comfortable with one focus and different methods, but we have a call to unity and not uniformity. And so, brothers and sisters, God has not called us to look at each other on why is who preaching. Oh, why did he preach that sermon? None of your business, none of your assignments. You preach too. You preach, I preach, we all preach, and God is glorified. Praise the Lord. We all get united in preaching. The moment we turn on each other, disunity begins there. Unity is a sign of being focused. Disunity is a sign of being distracted from our mission. Are we focused or are you distracting us? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 29 and 30, Jesus had given an example of a farmer who went planting wheat. And weeds grew among the wheat. And the workers came and said, Master, we need to uproot the weeds quickly so that we remain with a good crop of wheat. 
Matthew chapter 13 verse 29 says, but he said, no, no, no. Lest in gathering the weeds, you root up the wheat along with them. Then he said something in verse 30 that leaves many righteous people uncomfortable that let both grow in what manner? Together. Let them grow together. Let the wheat and weed grow together. Nobody has assigned you an assignment to go around identifying who are the weeds at the GC, the weeds at the division, the weeds at the union. None of your business. Nobody has an assignment to identify weeds in the church. Our business is to proclaim Christ to others. Our business is to nurture each other to the kingdom. He says, let both grow together until the time of harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, not you, to gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned and gather the wheat into my barn. God has not called us to turn against each other to identify weeds. He has called us to be united in helping each other grow, to be united in sending the gospel to the world. We must be united if we must have a deeper experience. It is not our business to look around and count who is racist, who is tribalist. No, ours is to look forward to a time when we shall be changed and we shall all be one race, children of God. We get distracted and distract others when we start uprooting what we think are weeds. We lose focus of fishing when we stop fishing and start cleaning the fish. God has called us, and I borrowed this from one of the speakers of the week of spiritual emphasis right here. He said, God has called us not to clean the fish, but to fish the way they are. He will clean the fish himself. We are fishers of men and not cleaners of fish. Even where the weeds are obvious, focus on the big picture. Remain united and serve your God-given purpose. Unity is a sign of being focused. Disunity is a sign of being distracted. Are we focused or are you distracting us? In Acts chapter 2, verse 44, and Acts chapter 4, verse 32, I want just to give these passages to help us understand that the early church that seemed almost ideal was united. Look at what the Bible says about the early church. In Acts chapter 2, verse 44, the Bible says, And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They were together. They were united. The early church was not perfect, but at least they were united. The early church had issues between Peter and Paul. The early church had issues between Barnabas and Paul. But listen, brothers and sisters, they remained united. When issues became serious, they called the Jerusalem Council where James chaired the meeting in order to promote unity because without unity, you cannot have a deeper experience with God. Each one of us must strive and work towards unity. If you are not contributing to unity, feel free to pack your bags and leave or the owner of the house will eject you. In Acts chapter 4, verse 32, this is what it says. Acts chapter 4, verse 32, he says, Now all who believed, no, 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 432, 432. Now the company of those who believed were of one what? One heart and 
and Saul. And no one said that any of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had everything in common. The early church was known for its unity. They may not have disagreed on how to preach to Gentiles. They may, not have, they may not have agreed on whether the Gentiles should be circumcised or not. They may not have agreed in many things, but they focused on unity. And now we have small issues here, and we have made a big issue out of them. Every corner we turn, we want to talk about it. You get a small opportunity in any WhatsApp group, you want to raise the contentious issue. You have a call to disunity. That call is not from God. You need to focus on what unites us. And so the prayer of Jesus in John chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. The prayer of Jesus. This is the prayer of Jesus. Before he left the world, he prayed. And in John chapter 17, verse 20, Jesus says, I do not pray for these 12 disciples alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That is us who are here today. Praise the Lord. Jesus says, I'm not only praying for the 12 who are in front of me, I'm praying also for many others who will believe, and we are the main many others. Praise the Lord. And in verse 21, he says, that they may all be what? I can't hear you. That they may all be what? That they may all be what? Be one. Even as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The prayer of Jesus that we will be united. That we will not be divided on which version who is using. You use your perfect version, and let me use my imperfect version, but let us be united. That they may all be what? That they may all be what? That they may all be what? Will you work towards unity and answer Christ's prayer? Will you work towards unity? and answer Christ's prayer? Will you contribute to unity when there is a factor that is dividing people? Because, brethren, if you have discovered that the church is very evil, don't stay in an evil place. You are free to protest and begin a new movement. If really the environment around you is evil, if the environment around you is toxic and racist and tribalist and lost from the purpose of pioneers and others, you are so free. Instead, risking disunity and risking the wrath of the head of the church, Jesus Christ. Jesus said that they may all be one. He looked into the future where we will all come from different places, but he said they may be one. He looked at our different races and tribes, and he said that they may be one. He looked at our varied perception of things in the church, and he prayed that they may be one. And we have a responsibility to work towards the unity that Jesus prayed about. Will you work towards the unity? and answer Christ's prayer? If your answer is yes, let me see by the show of hands. Father in heaven, it's not easy. Particularly when we want to impose to everyone our way of dressing, our way of eating, our way of life, our way of thinking. But we pray that your prayer may be answered in our lives, that we may be one. That we who have raised our hands will contribute to the unity of the church even when there are issues that have potential to divide. That we will focus on unity and not focus on dividing your church any further. Forgive us where we've contributed to division and help us to remain united in purpose and focus. 
that we may all be one. May this prayer be answered in Jesus' name. Amen.